Well, hey everybody. Uh, today we're continuing the series on how to make your own beekeeping equipment. Uh, what we're going to focus on today is the inner cover. So if you picture a beehive as a house, your bottom board is your foundation uh, or your basement level or slab, whatever your house sits on. Your box is going to be a story and those stories can stack on up. Um, what you get when you get to the equivalent of the ceiling of the house is what's going to what's what's called the inner cover. Some people tell you don't have to use them. Some people tell you opt to should uh, whatever. If it works for you, great. Personally, I use them. Um, and then the next uh, step, the roof of the hive is actually what they call the the cover or the telescoping cover, outer cover, whatever you want to call it. So it's a pretty simple uh, job. Again, we're we're referencing Tony Pisano's book. And he's got a couple of different styles of inner covers. Uh, the one that I use is uh, it's just a quarter inch sheet of Luon. Actually, uh, layment, underlayment. Oh, it's got a lifetime warranty. Uh, <laughs> but uh, this was, uh, I bought this for a project and, and had the leftover scraps. So these are, this is already made. Um, again, like a lot of beekeeping stuff, if, you, if you've got the material and you've got the saw set up, just keep cranking through until you're out of material out of time or, or don't feel like doing it any longer. But what I've got is I've got about half a dozen of these sitting um, that I that I ripped through when I had everything set up. And, and so we're not going to show you how to use it today or how to make this today, but I'll, I'll talk through it real quick. Two, uh, two, and what, what I did in my case is I used two holes with a uh, hole saw or a, a spade bit and then connect the dots with, uh, with a reciprocating saw, not a reciprocating saw, jigsaw. Anyway. <clears throat> and the other part about it is, uh, this is a piece of scrap cut off here. It is about two feet long. And you see, it, boy, it's sunshine and bright here. So I'll try to just get it wiped out. But this knot won't matter um, because the, the pieces want to be 18 and 7 eighths. Two of them are 18 and 7 eighths inch long, and two of them are 16 and a quarter. So uh, what we'll do is we'll rip them all to width first, and that is one and a quarter inches wide. So I'll come back, uh, do that on the table saw. I'll come back once I have the four pieces that are inch and a quarter. <laughs> What I wanted to show you there at the end of that, of the cutting was, was push sticks. So these are push sticks. Um, you can buy them, you can make them. You can just grab a piece of scrap that's laying around. I always keep a half a dozen pieces like this that, that fit to my hand. With this inch and a quarter width, that's, that's too close for me to feel comfortable reaching in between the, the blade and the fence as I'm making my through push. So uh, this little, Push for safety, push stick for safety. Okay, I've got them marked off here. That light's really coming through my windows in my weird shop here. Uh, but these are the 16 and a quarter marks. And you can see that that, uh, that knot is not gonna matter because we're gonna cut it off. And likewise with the, uh, nope, these are the 16 and a quarters. Either way, the illustration's the same. That mark, that's the waste end, so making kindling out of it. So I keep everything kind of a, a scrap piece hoarder. Uh, as I've been building beehive equipment for the last couple of years, everything can be used for something. Um, so anyway, we'll make these uh, make these cuts on the chop saw and come back. Okay, for the last two steps, um, you could switch over to a dado blade if you want, but um, even when I'm making big runs of uh, the inner covers, I don't switch over to a dado blade. You set, take your depth gauge. Don't need one. If you got one, they're handy. If you don't, it's okay. And you want to set your depth to five sixteenths. And uh, then you want to set your fence to, well, it's a three quarter inch piece, three quarter inch wide, and you want a quarter inch on either side. So you want to set your fence to about a quarter. Honestly, the easiest way to do it is to um, just eyeball it. And I'll show you what I mean. So hopefully this makes sense when I talked about eyeballing it. What you've got here is 
is about the middle of your your blade. It's about the middle of your your workpiece. And what you'll do is just move it a little bit to the uh, away from it. And so then what that will give you is slightly off centered piece, so that there will be a, a saw cut coming down here. You flip it. And you'll have a saw cut coming down here, and that should make the gap that you need. Okay, after you get all your pieces ran through, this is what you'll end up with. Uh, loose fitting, um, I don't know, what is that called, a, a tenon, a slot, whatever. But that's what you want. Next step is that you need to, I think I'll show you the book on this one. need to make your shoulder cuts. So you've got to come in the width of the side rail, which is inch and a quarter, and, and you leave a half inch of solid wood on the non-notched side. So if you know you cut these inch and a quarter, you need to leave a half, you need to make your saw cut three quarters of an inch deep. Okay, once you get your test complete, um, I have a miter gauge for this saw and that's what I'll use. I'll put the notch side down and I'll run them stacked in here. Push them uh, hard against fence and run them through. What I'm in the habit of doing is, is using the miter gauge for the first pass through, get that edge set, flip them around, and miter gauge, tight it to the fence, cut through. And then I'll actually pull the miter gauge off and I will just go freehand up until the edge. I don't I don't like to get too pinchy on the to the fence. And then and uh, we'll show you the next step here. Okay, so you have your your uh, end and and uh, end cut rabbits and uh, you dry fit it. Everything's cool. Final step is assembly, just like Norm would say, assembly. Simply use some glue. Uh, and here, I only glue the end of the rabbit. I'll glue both sides of that. I don't put any glue in the in the groove here. This is all dry, and that lets it float as this uh, wood expands and contracts and does whatever it wants to do with the moisture. Um, you don't want to bind that that in. So, um, using my table saw for assembly. Uh, just take a simple uh, crown, narrow crown stapler. This has an uh, inch or seven eighths staples in it. One in each corner. And we'll do the same thing for the other side. Uh, you can use screws to, to fix these together, nails, um, whatever you've got handy kind of the beauty of this is there's not a lot of lateral strain on this joint this is this is just to keep the pieces fixed together you will pop, pop this open every time you open your hive uh, obviously to look into the top box that it sits on but it's always out of the weather it's always high and dry the last thing I do is, is uh, I check it for square and I showed you how to do that in the uh, video on how to build a beehive box. So that was the inner cover or um, ceiling of the beehive. So hope you uh, this gives you the confidence to make your own stuff and hope you and found this video useful.